start every single morning off. We usually, our pastor usually starts off with prayer. And we're going to do the same this morning. We're going to start this day off with prayer. If you've watched the news, if you've seen any of the any things that's going on, you know that our country is in need of prayer now more than ever before. We're in need of prayer. So as you go into your prayer posture, whatever posture that is that you begin to speak to God, remember this country. Remember our leaders. Remember our president. Remember our local leaders and our state leaders. Remember our church leaders because they have a job in front of them. And God, we're going to go before God. But I want you all to just go into that space. Go into that space. Hallelujah. It's time that we go before the throne. Hallelujah. It's time that we go before the throne of grace. Because if no one can help us, there's power in the name of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory for this day. Hallelujah. Thank you for bringing us and assembling us together for your name's sake, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We, we, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you thanks for everything that you have done and everything that you have planned to do, Lord God. Hallelujah. Enter in to this place today. Fill us up with your spirit and with your power. We need you now, God. You are welcome here. Hallelujah. Come in. Come in. Come into this place. Lord God, we need your spirit to fill us up. Hallelujah. God, right now we want to we send our prayers for the country that we live in, the United States of America, God. There's turmoil in our country, Lord God, but we know that you, your word says that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. And God, we pray that you will release that power all over the 50 states of this country.
generation. How your children's children can be blessed off of your praise today. Hallelujah. He can do it today. He can do it today. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you believe in God for. Whatever it is that you begin to believe him for. I just dare you just to begin to give him this praise this morning.
Cedar Ridge Church of College Park. Yeah. Um, we have a short few announcements this morning. First, if you're a first time guest, we ask that you just lift your hand so we can get you a connections card so that we're able to reach you or contact you. And our kids, we'll do um, city kids, so we'll go ahead and dismiss you guys. You all can exit stage left. All right, all right. And that's actually all that we have this morning, you guys. So let me please be the first to say, welcome home. Good morning, everybody. My wife and I apologize for not being there this Sunday. But my grandmother up in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, is celebrating her 90th birthday. And we traveled up there to spend uh, Friday and Saturday with her uh, on a birthday with the rest of the family. And then we'll be traveling back on uh, Sunday morning. But um, I just wanted to tell you guys, uh, I am excited to, to bring up this guy. Uh, man, I tell you what. He has spoke life into me. He has been there for me. He has uh, encouraged me throughout the process when we were launching CCP. And, and I, I just think the world of him and his wife, man, as a matter of fact, he shares the same name as my wife, which is Rhonda. And, and, and what a beautiful name I know, right? <laughs> but David, you know, you, you are an awesome friend, you're an awesome brother. And let me just tell you all a quick story about, about David and myself. You know, David was in the hospital, and and I told Ron, I said, let David know I'm come visit him and, and see how he's doing. So I got up work one day, and I went to the hospital, and I was tired. And if you know me, if somebody's resting and, and, or they're asleep, I'm not going to wake them up. I'm going to just let them be at peace and let them get their rest. This is just not in my character or my nature to, to, to be that kind of person. Well... I put I popped my head in David's door and he seemed to sleep. So I tried to bag back out real slow and David sat up and said, Hey, how you doing? <laughs> and and David sat up, I just walked in and and we spent up hours just talking and, and just sharing with each other, you know, talking about life, talking about our kids, talking about our wives. You know, we were just talking and and just had a beautiful time together. But that's just the spirit that he has. So it brings me great pleasure to bring up this man uh, in, in, in my absence today to speak life into you guys today. So David, the pulpit is yours. Knock it out of the park. Y'all have a Holy Ghost foot stomping, running, whatever y'all want to do today time. I love you guys. Y'all have an awesome Sunday. Jason and First Lady Karen uh, at uh, Living Waters, and just want to thank God for bringing us all to this place today. And uh, just let me tell a little prayer before I get started here. Heavenly Father, we pray. We give you thanks. We give you honor. We give you glory. We just thank you, Lord, for bringing us here to stay. And so I got the uh, song singers, Lord, as they came for the praise team and some of our hearts happened this morning, Lord, and spoke about, Lord, the things that are going on in this country things that are going on in this world. But Lord, it's nothing new, Lord God. I just pray, I just come today, Lord, to share what I have because I just want somebody to receive, Lord God, and to, to know how I got this far in my life, Lord. David said I was old. He said that he was, he was young, then he was old. He said he never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed bed and bread. And so I just want to testimony today, Lord God, it's going to be according to your word, according to your will. 
And according to Lord God, what Brother Doug brought to this morning, I'm just going to go that road, Lord God, because this testimony that you have given me, Lord, needs to be told so that somebody might have faith in this, these last and evil days. Amen. Everybody say amen. 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 I just want to give God thanks. And the subject I wanted to use for today was uh, in, in, uh, enduring God's glory. Enduring God's glory. So when we think about God's glory, we think about the heavenly things, we think about all the great things that God has in store for us. We think about, when I think about God's glory, I think about all the significant things that, that God has shown us in the world that we, that we, in, that we entangle ourselves with every day. Our jobs, going to work, our, the love that we have for our family, our friends, the love that we have for the creation that God made for us, the beautiful trees, the mountains, the majesties, the oceans, the rivers, the valleys. And sometimes I told, us, I told a message one time about that I see God in, in the, 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 the animals, the pets that he, he has given us. I sometimes examine the cats that I have in my house. I know a lot of people don't like cats, but I'm going to tell y'all something. <laughs> y'all, we need to examine everything. He said, the earth is full of God's glory. Yeah, yeah. It's full of it. Yeah. And sometimes you need to stop and think about it. And if, you, you know, if we meditate on God on these things, we'll find out that the earth is full of his glory. You can be right down the street. And you can see the lion in the street. Then it reminds you of the word of God. When the word of the Lord says that his, 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 his word is a lamp to our feet. It's a walkway to our path. It's a light to our pathway. You know, when you see the lion in the street, you think about the word of God. You think about God's rule. That if you venture off, side, off these lines, the lines, if you go this far this way, you go too far that way, past the yellow line or the white line, you're in danger of your life. So it's a road map. God's word is a lamp and a light to our feet. He said that and during God's word, there's four things I want to share with you today about this glory. Now, it's, 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 we think about the glory of God. We think about heaven. We think about all the brightness of God. We think about glory. We think about Christ. The Christ, Christ is the glory of God. Christ is our salvation. Christ is all we have to do. So all things were made by him. And there was nothing made that wasn't made by his hand. All things, thanks. Let me tell you, all things. He didn't say some things. He didn't say a few things. All things were made by him. And this transparent of God's light. In other words, God made created all things through the light of Christ. And through this, uh, through this, through, through God's mercy and his grace, he said, you know, he, he said, let there be, and there was. Yes. And he spoke this out of faith. So this is four things that I want to explain to you about the glory of God. And in these four things, I want to let you know now, look at the world around you. Things you may be going through, things that you may be suffering. And sometimes, especially today, you're going to wonder, what is it about this glory of God that's so hard to obtain? What is it about the glory of God that's so difficult? So what I'm going to share with you is what, what, how God brought me through. Going up from a child, going through the misery, the things that I came out of. And uh, just coming up to where I am today. When, when, when Pastor Doug came to see me in the hospital, that was the second bout that I had with death that year. The first one was with sepsis. The sepsis was a, a, a dangerous and deadly blood disease. It was brought on by my liver. The liver was damaged, so the liver could not pump out the poison out of my blood, right? So, so then, once they got the sepsis taken care of, which of course, I was paralyzed for a little while and things, I had to get myself, no sooner I got myself back together, then the liver went bad. So then I was still sick was one year for the death and one year for the liver. So in that process of the liver damage, they found found out that the liver was it was it was done. It had been given like four, four, they had four months to live from that time. And in those four months, God did miraculous things. But coming up to that time, these four things I want to talk about, the first thing is faith. If you're ever going to need anything to make it, to the kingdom, to the glory of God, you better have faith. Oh, yes. So what is faith? Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us that faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. It's what? It's evidence of things not seen. And so, you know, now I'm going to tell you, young people especially, 
There is a there is a there is a spirit that's coming against the church, and it's definitely coming against the young people. And what this spirit wants to do is he wants to separate Christ from the church. In other words, there's this thing, this is saying going around now that they have they want to do question Jesus Christ and his portion into the church. They want to have, in other words, they want to have church without Christ. They want to omit all the things that have to do with living. A righteous and, 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 and holy life. They want to eliminate all those things that make for you living a right life. Now, a lot of people are scared of that word. Don't be scared of that word. It only means separate. Mm -hmm. That's why so many people just get so confused with so many little things. How sick just mess our mind up. That only means being separated. That's all that means. It don't have nothing to do with what you wear, how you, all those that things, you know, you, you know, as long as you look at modest, that's all that the word of the Lord said. It has to do with you being separate yourself from living an unholy life. That's all it is. So you got to have faith. Faith is what it's a, it's a, it's a substance. They just found out not too many, not too long ago, that light was a substance. You know, they 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 they, they, they had a mystery about light. Faith is a substance. Now, don't get me wrong, saints. We have faith. You believe it, but do, but stop and think about it. It is a tangible. Yes. It's a substance. Yes. So therefore, if a man has a thought in his, his mind and says, I'm going to build this house. I'm going to build this house. I'm going to build it right here. First, he imagines this house in his mind. Right. It's all, you know, so the substance of what he's thinking about has, has already exists. The substance of what he does is he gathers these things together. He hammers, nails, wood. And all of a sudden, he gets the land. And, and what this man envisioned, he makes a blueprint. And all that he envisioned when it's all said and done, becomes materialized in a nice, beautiful home that this man has. So you, you have builders that, that testify what it, what it, that faith is what faith is also what? A foundation. Faith is a foundation. You gotta have something to stand on, saints. If you don't stand for God, you don't stand for anything. Faith is a foundation and it's a sure foundation. So where is this foundation? Where does it come from? The foundation of the word of the word of God. That's what we stand on. Whatever God said, that's what you believe. You don't have to deviate from what God said. It's all in his word. Everything you need is in this word. When God created the earth, he created the earth to be a foundation to support the habitat of mankind. That we might have a spot of ground under our feet. Then Jesus equated it, okay, so if a man build his house. Is he going to build his house on the sand? A shifted place where the sea will come and or a storm come and shake the foundation on sand? It's going to collapse. It's going to crush. And Jesus said, great would be the fall. But he said, if a man builds his house on the rock, yes, yes. he said, that house shall stand. If you build your house on a solid foundation, what is the solid foundation? The solid foundation is on the word of God. Build your to your foundation, build your house, build your family, build your, your life on God's word. I'm telling you, thanks, you can't go wrong. I was tell Sister Burke, if you go right, you could never go wrong. What do you say? What do you mean to say going right? This is the principle that God had, had given me. Don't, Jesus said, don't judge according to what you see. Don't look at things and make a judgment on what you see. If you look at something and say, oh, that's the, and that's the, you judge by what it appears, Satan can deceive you into thinking it'll never be. Right. He can make you say, don't judge, don't make judgment. He said, but make a judgment according to what is right. So when you make a decision, just make a decision. Is it the right thing to do? Is it the wrong thing? It's, if it's right, then you go by what's right. So how do you know what's right and what's wrong? You know about the word of God. It's that foundation that you need. Faith is our, is our justification. First of all, I mean, let me let me just read that uh, this book of Romans five one through five. You find that all these 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 faith, hope, love, and these uh, and and trial, tribulation, and patience they all consist in this scripture. Right? Go ahead, Sister Bert. Therefore, being justified by faith, justified. we we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Yeah. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. 
Okay. So you see all of the faith, hope, and love all consist in this scripture that, that Paul is talking about. Now I'm going to talk about the glory. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what, 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 what you're going to be going through to get to the glory of God. You're going to have to go through something. Salvation is free, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, Jesus said the world is narrow. Mm -hmm. Broad is the way to destruction. Narrow is the way to life. Life. Now I'm going to tell you why people, so many people are on the pathway of destruction. Because in order to, 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 to make it to the gate, to the kingdom, and to the glory, the, uh, the fullness of the glory of God, that's where you, that's where you want to go, right? That's where you want to be. You know, you, you look at the world, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here when, 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 when God takes his church and then it's a great separation. I don't want to be left back here. I don't want to be here with this confusion and the mess. I don't want to be in the glory of God. I want to be in his presence. So then when, when, when Jesus uh, was talking about we have faith is our justification. So, how, so, 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 so sometimes, I'm going to tell you something, this is something that God showed me this here recently. Let me say, this, 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 think about this. When you read the word of God, the reason the people are turning away from the word of God is because when you read the word of God and you read the words of Jesus, that's a standard. Wow. That's a standard. That's a high standard. You know, you're talking about angry, you're talking about getting mad, you're talking about, you're talking about the things that we do in life, you're talking about all the things that we see on television, all these things, it's a standard that Jesus set, and it's, it's kind of saying, you kind of think to yourself, it's impossible. It's impossible. So I talked to the Lord one time, I said, Lord, you know, that's a mighty high standard, mighty high standard you have, so I'm trying to attain, but you are, you know what, you're going to find problems trying to attain to that to that destiny. You're going to have problems because the flesh, Paul said, the flesh is going to always be there trying to pull you from one side to the next side. It's a war going on in your members. So why is, why is, the, why is, the, why is the standard set so high? The Lord reminded him, he said, no, he didn't think justification. He said, I'm the justification. He said, I'm the standard. Mm -hmm. He said, I've already, already made the way for you. I'm the standard. I died on the cross to, to, to meet the standard. Mm -hmm. I met the standard when I, they shed my blood on Calvary's cross. He said, I'm the standard. I'm not going to lower my standard. But I did lower myself low enough to die on the cross for you. He said, so don't, you know, he said, what you do is you just attain to the highest standard that you can attain to. He said that the, the word of the Lord tells us that the word of God was given to us. This is the reason, the reason why the word was, 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 was given to us by all these saints and all these prophets. That the man of God might be fully furnished for every good work. So in other words, that, you know, you might, might, might not attain. Some of us are going to be, when that time comes, you might be here. You might be here. Some people was here, they might have gone down to here. But I'm going to tell you something, saints. The, the price is already paid and the way is already made. You don't have to worry about it. It's always, all you have to do is do what you're doing now. Just keep serving the Lord. Don't give up on him. Don't give him away. Don't let nobody talk you out of your salvation. Because it's, the way it's already, made, already been made. You have already received your salvation through Christ. He's already have, have obtained that for you. So all you have to do is reach to the highest goal you can. Study God's word and reach to the highest standard that you can. And then all the other things you leave up to God. Don't, don't let Satan talk to you and say, oh, you're not good enough. Then what he's going to try to tell you? He's going to tell you, look, man, this is, this is impossible. This is an impossible way. It's already been made for you. What is that? Through hope. We also have uh, our uh, salvation through hope. We have our enduring God's glory through hope. So what is hope? Hebrews 1 and 1 uh, testifies that uh, we, 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 we talk about when it's talking about faith is a substance of things hoped for, right? So what we hope? What do we hope for? Hope is what we have when we desire something better. When we when we wish for better days, it's, it's, it's kind of like a wish that we had. You know, you're going through. You have the aches and pains in your body. You say, Lord, you know, it's you know, friends turning you down. Everybody's turning against you. You don't know which way to turn. And and, and think about it. If you don't hope for a better day or a better place, Paul told us that what hope is there in this place. What is the hope of us being just concentrated, trading on this world? If we do, if we have hope in this world, it's a disaster. It's, you know, we looking for we looking at we looking at one day when the world finally comes to its close and and and, and, and all the people's hopes and dreams come dashing down. Say, uh, look, uh, young people, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to, to tarnish y'all's future because if God gave you a future, believe me, if you're in the process of that future. 
and you believe in him, it won't, it won't even bother you. But what I'm just saying is you have to remember that the hope that you have for a better time, the hope that you have for a better job, the hope that you have for a better tomorrow, the hope that you have is part of that process. You have to hope for something. You have to hope. You wouldn't go to college if you didn't hope for a better job. Mm -hmm. Or you didn't have a better, you know, you wouldn't go, you wouldn't go and uh, people wouldn't get going to training if you didn't hope for a better. So what is the hope to, through this hope and through this faith process that we are, we are seeking for the glory of God? So let me tell you about the third. The third one is through, through love. Let me tell you about things. If you don't have love, don't worry about it. Love is one of those things that we take so much for granted. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said, Lord, when I first started on this, I said, Lord, how can I love that person? How can I love that person that just did this awful thing to me? How can I love this person that is unlovable? What, 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 how, you're talking about love my enemies. What? You know, they setting me up for the fall, setting you up for the kill, they setting you up for the downfall. They got their foot stuck out to trip you up, trip you down, and throw it every other kind of way. And you talk, you saying to yourself, well, oh, wait, I had a problem with that. This thing called love. But as time went on, I start to understand it. When Jesus said that you had to love your enemies and told you to love one another, that was the chief commandment that God gave. Jesus said, one is to love thyself. Second is to love thy neighbor. When he left the earth, he gave it, he gave it, he summed it up in one word. He says, I give you one new commandment, and that is love. So how does love will help how is love going to help you get to the kingdom? I'll tell you how it's going to help you. Love is a is an action word. Love is something, you know, it's not nothing that we just, you know, we, we say we love one another. You know what? You can say you, you love a person all day long, but if you're not acting in that love, what good, Jesus said, a positive, what good is it? I'm just like a sounding bell. If love doesn't have any action behind it, you know, love gave this, uh, Paul gave this trade of, in, uh, in uh, I think it was uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, where he was, he was talking about, in the end, there's faith, hope, and love. These three are going to carry us through to the end of time, to the to, to, to last of our days. But then he gave a trade, he said, the greatest of these things is love. The greatest thing of all these these uh, these four things, these three things I mentioned so far, faith, hope, the greatest one of them is love. Because without it, loving your enemy, loving your neighbor, that's the whole, you, if, you, if you just concentrate, love thy enemy as thyself, think about that. If you're loving somebody, they can do you no harm. If you're loving somebody, you, can, you won't do them no harm. Right. If you're loving somebody, you say, how, how, how do you love the unlovable? I'll tell you what, if you love them, you pray for them like Jesus said, do, he said, told you to do, then that's all. Oh, no man, nothing but to what? Love him. Love. You, don't have, you don't have nothing else after that. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't have nothing else after that. After that, love is going to take care of itself. Love, if you have a dollar in your pocket, you give, your, give the enemy a dollar, give him a, a drink of cold water, that's going to be on his head. It's not going to be on your head. So love is the one thing that's going gonna, gonna to conquer and help you to get to your destination. Love is something that we, like I said, we take for granted. Love is where we throw around, but love is what transferable. I can love Rhonda, Rhonda, Rhonda can love me. I do for Rhonda, Rhonda do for me some 32 years. We've been in that process of just, you know, you know, you know it's not so much of saying that I love you, but so much of doing and showing her that I love her. She, she does that and show me that she loved me over the years. Sometimes, I'm going to tell you something about love, lay your love. You know, there's many kinds of love. This kind of love is the love that God talks about. The love that God talking about called agape love. Yes. I'm telling you, other love will play, they're going to play tricks with your mind. Right. This love, the love that we have, the fleshly love that we have, I'm telling you, it, you're going to find yourself in some bad straits in that kind of, in that love. You're going you're gonna to find yourself, you're going to find some people, some people want to, they walk out on you, and you're going to be so hurt, you ain't going to know what to do. You're going to tell people going to do some things to you, and you're going to like, you know, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about people you're in, I'm talking about friends, family, and all. This thing that I'm telling you, it's, but guess what? Love is like a child. What? You hear the child? Child gets over it, he's ready to play the next day. Amen. That's what love yeah. does. Love doesn't, it doesn't bear the cross. It doesn't bear no, it doesn't, it doesn't say, oh, I'm going to get you back. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't envy. It's not full of strife. And the key thing in these last few minutes I'm going to talk about is through trials and tribulations. 
Patience. Faith, you gotta have it. Hope, you gotta have it. You tell me how you're gonna make it clean. Love, top of all, you gotta have it. That's the most important thing. And then trials and tribulations. If Ronnie, if Ronnie, read up to two through five for me. So read two through five for me one more time. Okay. Tell about the process. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand okay. and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations okay. also. Okay, right there. Glory in what? Tribulations also. Tribulation. Y'all count that. Okay, go ahead. Knowing that tribulation, tribulation. works with patience, patience and patience experience, experience and experience hope. hope. And hope makes it not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Okay. Patience. Faith. Hope. Love. Going through the process. Pastor, Pastor, uh, Pastor Doug was talking about came to see me. I was in a bad situation. Thanks. Terrible situation. How did I how did I survive that? I look back now and I said, Lord, it's been virtually impossible. It was virtually, I look back and said, I could there's no way I could have endured that kind of pain for two years. Going through all this. I mean just uh, just pain. I'm telling y'all things. It was just just so miserable. You know how I got there? You know how I made it through that process? Through this process right here. Because it all started when I was a child. Lost my mother at the age of 13. I ended up in the most most terrible ghetto the world ever, ever probably known. It was the most horrible place for a child to be at the age of 13. I witnessed things that the common, the average man probably never seen in all his days. It was like a war zone. I seen people stabbed in the head. I seen them shot down. I seen them gunned down. I seen a man get his fight, face sliced wide open. I seen just, 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 just some, of those, some of those ungodly sights that, that, that disturbed my soul. I'm telling you things. It was so horrible. And I, I used to ask God when I got saved, and I, I'm trying to shake off all these memories and things, and I said, Lord, you know why? I said, why, Lord? I said, I can't, I can't, I can't maintain this kind of lifestyle. It's just too much tragedy in my soul. I can't, I can't understand these things that you're trying to to tell me about how can I understand faith when there's so much sorrow in my soul. But I'm going to tell y'all things these last few minutes. I'm going to tell you what the process was that Robert just talked about. If you want to know what pearls are price, priceless pearls, you know where jewels come from. You know where diamonds come from. They come from an oyster. The pearl comes from an oyster. The oyster it's a, it's, a, it's a mollusk, and it's, it's, got, you know, it's got two shells, and you know, I don't know what an oyster is. And inside, it's got the, uh, the, it's the real soft, uh, fleshy, and the inside shell on the outside. It's got a little hole. A grain of sand gets in that, in that mollusk, mm -hmm. one grain, one grain. And what that, what that, what that oyster does is it secretes a, a, a substance, oh, no. right? So, so when that substance hard, it, it secretes more substance. Yeah. When that substance hard, it, it, it secretes more substance. And it just keeps on the creeping structure until this 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 round ball occurs because he's constantly trying to put out that pain. I'm gonna say you got pain in your life. This man, God is manufacturing love in your soul for your future. I never would believe that what I was going through at that time was gonna be lift the realm and stay in my life in the future. I didn't have no idea. So the, the Lord said, you know, just just. Just keep, just keep going, don't worry. Just keep moving on. Just kept, just kept secreting. Trying to, can I used everything, saying. So I look, I used drugs. I used anything, every drug, drugs in the vein, drugs in the nose, drugs, you name it, I used it. I was trying to, alcohol, you name it, I was trying to numb that pain. But it just kept on. So when I got saved, guess what I saying? I didn't have no more, no more uh, drugs. I didn't have nothing else to, 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 to stop and ease my pain. I didn't have it. All I had was Jesus and him crucified. That's all I had. So the pain was just out of out of rage. I said, Lord, I can't bear this pain. I said, Lord, it just kept on. And just kept on. And just kept on. Just kept on. 
You reminded me of that, that arsenic. You said, keep on, keep on, keep on. And all the while he's making this, 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 this grain of sand is making. Then he said, I got a little further down the road. He said, okay, have diamonds. He said, you know what? How precious gems are made. They're made of coal. You know, a diamond's made the hardest substance, one of the greatest substances on earth. The woman's position, the woman's best friend. And I'm telling you something. That diamond is made through yes, treasure. Much pressure, much fire, much, 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 but just tons of pressure upon this, this, this coal, and it just crushes and crushes and crushes, crushes the heat, the heat. Talk about, we're talking about tremendous amounts of heat. And then when it's all said and done, thanks when the rock is opened up and everything passes by and the dust flies away, here you have this priceless gem. So all this time I'm suffering so that I can't understand why I was suffering. And then Rhonda was reading when she was reading in Romans 5, 1 through 5, tells us this. That glory of God also worketh in our tribulation. You're going to get to the glory of God, endure that suffering. Oh, You're going to get to the chain, I'm going to tell y'all things. Tell me, listen, young people, y'all going to go through some things. Mm -hmm. Especially in this generation today, this, I'm telling you, y'all going to experience some things that y'all going to need to know this. Y'all going to need to know that hold on to these things. Four things. Faith, hope, love, and try and, and patience through tribulation. Patience, endurance. It makes you, it gets you there. So by the time I was there in the hospital, Brother Dove came by and he spoke to me. Guess what, y'all? I had got to the place where I was able to lie there and take all that pain because of the pain of my past. And I laid there and I took it and I took it and I said, well, it was nothing new to me. It was nothing new to me. I said, you know, I'm a little bit I said, Lord, you know, but you know what though? Because of what I endured in the past, I was able to go to two years. I only survived that because of what I went through in my youth. And I was able to stand up in that bed and I was able to say, Lord, you are God. Yes. That Joe said, if you slay me, yet will I, yet will I trust you. Lord, your word said, I put my faith was totally in God. By that time, I was thoroughly convinced, Lord, you didn't bring me to this time to leave me now. And that came to pass. I thank God. I'm telling you, I say, hold on. I don't care what they do to you. I don't care what they say about you. I don't care what you go through. I'm telling you that God is going to bring you out. Do not give up. Do not give up your faith. And don't turn your back on God for anything or anybody. Can everybody say,
of cash in the house, but we also, you can also give online, um, and you are also able to, um, to, to write out a check, or you can write out a check if you like, you can give using push pay, but at this time we know that our offering, our, our tithe, is the tenth that belongs to God, and our offering shows our heart for God. So at this time, it's time for your um, offering. We're going to ask our greeters if they would come on and pass the basket. Go in peace.